Now we're going to take a look at the timpani etude and break it down phrase by phrase. At the beginning, I like to play with a more, a little bit more firm uh, fulcrum at the beginning. That gives me more clarity on these soft notes. So make sure you're playing in a good beating spot, which is about four or so inches inside the head. Again, I'm giving a little bit more focus to the fulcrum there, and that's going to give me that clarity and articulation at the low dynamic. I'm also in measure three doing some double sticking there. I'm playing two lefts, which is again perfectly valid. Most of the time when we play tempo, we want to alternate sticking, but in this case, because it's soft, uh, it's perfectly fine to double. Here's a roll in measure three and four. One of the things that I do with my rolls, and by the way, this is a good moment to make sure and tell you, Make sure you go and see those technique videos that I made. I'm going to talk all about rolls. I talk about legato strokes and wrist exercises and fingers. Make sure and check out those fundamental videos uh, because it's going to really apply to a lot of the concepts that I'm talking about here. Let's go back. Measure three. There is a roll into measure four. I start the roll with my hands together. And as the roll gets louder, my hands spread out. This is a concept that I like to do. I feel like um, to me, when I widen my hands for loud rolls, I feel like it gets smoother. And uh, when I play loud rolls with my hands together, sometimes I do that, but that produces a sound where you can hear all the individual beats, like you can hear the individual sticks playing. So if you're looking for a really rhythmic sounding roll, that would be it. In this case, all the rolls in this piece, we want to be big and full and round. So I'm going to spread my hands as the roll gets louder. a nice round sound so all right for this next section measure uh, end of measure four into measure five uh, fortissimo here we're going to make sure and play with nice rebounded or lifted even lifted strokes uh, so that the, the the dynamic doesn't become harsh the sound doesn't become harsh all right i'm also going to put a little bit of buoyancy in this by giving it a little bit of an agogic pulse so takes us to the next concept, which is crossover strokes. The first crossover stroke in this etude is in measure six, um, right there. And so when you, when you do crossover strokes, what you're looking for is I'm going to switch from my sort of tympanistic technique to match grip when I cross over. I'm crossing over basically at the wrist, all right? I'm going to make sure that I'm playing in a good playing position here, about four or so inches inside the head, maybe a little bit more because it's 32. All right, and that's the concept, all right? Making sure you're turning over and then getting back to your tympanistic technique for uh, the rest of the articulations. Now in measure seven, we have another crossover stroke, but here, measure seven and eight, there is a strategy for tuning. When you tune in this etude, the way I approach it, is I articulate the pedals on specific beats. That allows me to keep the time in the rest and it's a great strategy for playing clean uh, in time and being efficient with my pedaling. So in measure seven and eight, what I do is I dampen the drums on beat three of measure seven, then I tune on beat one of measure eight, tune on beat two, and then I'm in on beat three. I'll demonstrate that with a metronome. So I'm gonna start in measure seven and play these two measures for you. By the way, you'll notice, I should mention this too, I already have one foot up on a pedal. Really important that you sit when you play this etude, I think. It, it certainly makes the tuning way easier. If you're, if you're standing, you can't put two feet on the pedals at the same time because you'd fall over. So sitting allows you to have both feet on the pedals so, so you can tune quickly. Now I'm gonna demonstrate measure seven and eight so I can show you how I do my tuning. I dampen the drums on beat three of measure seven and then tune on beats one and two of measure eight. Looks like this. All right, and then I'm into that next passage. So if you use that strategy, you can use that same strategy in the later tuning uh, schemes, uh, which we'll get to in a moment.